Hello and welcome to Connecting You to You Radio, where we tune in to receive the messages of health and well-being that are being broadcast from the soul. I'm your host, Lisa Warner, author of The Simplicity of Self-Healing. I show you how to heal your body naturally by combining your body's innate intelligence with the wisdom of your own soul so that you can break through the mental programming of limiting beliefs that cause disease and make healing your body and changing your life simple. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to another Conversations in Consciousness with Lisa and Keith. I am Lisa Warner, author of The Simplicity of Self-Healing. And I am Keith Leon S., author of a whole bunch of books (laughs) and a film called The Inside Effects, How the Body Heals Itself. Six-time award winner now and recently accepted into Orlando Film Festival. Wow, six stuff. awards. Woohoo. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations. Thanks. Yeah, it's exciting. Exciting stuff. Working yeah. on a film, a TV series as well. Woohoo. Yay. All kinds of goodness coming from you. <laughs> I love yeah. it. Yeah. Got his Thank ring God. <laughs> Thank God. Yes. Thank God. Exactly. <laughs> Yes, and there is our topic for today. Our topic today is God. This is a word that I couldn't even speak for years because there's so much distortion that has been embedded in that word, in that concept, and I knew for a very long time that I didn't want to have anything to do with that God (laughs) that they've been talking about. So it's only been very recently for me that I've actually been able to clear all of the distortions out of that word for myself and truly reconnect so I can now allow God to flow through me, that living life force energy of creation. So Keith, you wrote a book called Walking with My Angels, and that has a lot to do with God, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Backing up to just like you not being able to say it. I haven't I haven't really ever had that issue. Like I've been able to say it because I knew I had my own uh interpretation of what it is. Uh but but those words just reminded me of uh I got together with my music partner, uh, Eric Peterson, for the first time to make music. And he was like, all right, I'll play. We can make music together as long as we don't do any of the, those God songs, right? Which was funny because we both came from Agape, and that's what we were known for, writing and singing spiritual tunes, right? And that's exactly what I had written the lyrics, you know, some of the lyrics for to take to be our first song (laughs) and then he says as long as it's not that god stuff and i was like well let me just uh let me just run this by you once we once once i got there and so i uh read the lyrics to him and then he was like oh oh and then what i what i had written was like a uh, a prompt and so then he just kind of took off from where i left off and and started the whole thing so we recorded a whole cd um and the first five or six songs were were spiritual and then it then it took it you know took a turn and went to just like motivational and inspiring and love songs kind of stuff (laughs) and so all that to say the woman who we got to do our book cover in vermont or the cd cover so used to saying book cover the woman we got to do our cd cover was sitting with the cd she asked for the music and we came back to i came back to look at the cover she had created and it was just stunning it was gorgeous it was like rays coming 
through the trees, you know, and lighting up the forest and, and just, ah, oh, absolutely gorgeous. And, and she said, and I quote, I was listening to your music while I was making this. And when I heard the first song and I heard the word God, I was like, Bleh. right. I'd had a guttural reaction. I just, I, I just, I hate that word. I've not been able to say that word. Blah, blah, blah. And then, but I kept listening to the music and I realized that 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 God wasn't the God you were talking about. And so I kept listening to the CD as I pre created this music. And I have to say, uh, or as I created the CD cover, and I have to say that it completely reframed her whole, her whole deal with that word. And she said, I will no longer be afraid of that word because I realized that that's, it was someone else's interpretation that I was mad at. And that, uh, you know, it's just easier to say than all the things that people say. <laughs> right? God just, God just flows as opposed to, you know, uh, spirit, universe, <laughs> all the other things that I heard, uh, I've heard over the years. And, uh, and then the same thing happened with a, a friend of ours. These were both people in, uh, in Vermont, which is interesting in our, in the hometown. Uh, another friend of mine, uh, who was actually on the show a couple, a couple weeks ago. Amy, she had the same experience. She was just like, oh, I always could like not stand that word. And then just listening to your CD changed that. And so I, it was one of those feelings like, I feel like that's why we did the CD. Because if just the two first two people that listened to it had that experience, how many more people in the world got, got that reframe? Right. And so, so when I, when I look at that word, then yeah, then I get it. If you're, if you're brought up in a very dogmatic male dominated, uh, uh, church, right. That is just making you feel all bad all the time, sinner, you know, all of that. It's, yeah. And that's what you're contributing to that word. Then I could see running far away from that word <laughs> unless that's your deal and that's fine right i like i i say if, if you can go to the church and hear all of that and you feel close to god and you feel like it serves you and it helps you then that's that's fantastic i just didn't uh, that wasn't me <laughs> i was brought up in in a church that uh that slung dogma and i just uh, as soon as i could get out of there i did <laughs> That's for sure. Yeah. <clears throat> when I was, you know, my, my experience came from, you know, when I was, when I was two and was in that field of unconditional love, it was completely clear to me that that is God, that God isn't a person that, you know, he's not some guy in the sky with a tablet keeping track of, everything that's going on god is this massive like the all of creation is inside god and god is inside all of us all of every everything that has life everything that is alive is filled with this living life force energy of creation that is god that is this unconditional love. But this world that we live in, God has been hijacked. There were people that have placed themselves in between man and God. And now we have this intermediary. So now, now we have mankind has to go through the intermediary to get to God. And it's like, that's where all of this, everything started when we got cut off from God and these people planted themselves in between. And then they became the kings and the queen, kings and queens and rulers and popes and emperors and all of these people that placed themselves between us and God. And then they became the gods. And, you know, then everything kind of went south after that. 
to when I was two and I just, I knew God. I was experiencing God. And then my parents would take me to church and it was like, well, you have to worship God and you have to like, says who? <laughs> That's not what God says. God doesn't want to be worshiped. That's just weird. <laughs> like, like if you, you know, you wouldn't want your child to worship you, right? Can you imagine like having a child and then it's like, you need to worship me. <laughs> like, that's not what it is. <laughs> I know there's, and there's so, so much discrepancy between even just the Old Testament and the New Testament. At the Old Testament, like God is vengeful and hateful and spiteful and mad and angry, and you know, then all of a sudden, oh, <laughs> right, Jesus appears, and then then it's all love. Right? So it's like these two things don't don't necessarily match, and even in even in that book, the books contradict themselves, which is funny because it, it truly is you know, people telling stories and trying to remember things, and don't we all remember things differently anyway? We could, you and I could be in the same room. Something happens. We talk about it a year from now, and it'll be like, no, it happened this way. And I'll be like, no, it happened this way, and uh, we'll both be right <laughs> because Absolutely. that's the way we re we remembered it. But going back to the, I loved when when you talked about man in the sky, um, and you had prefaced with, I wrote a book called Walking with My Angels. So those of you who read it know that I got to spend time with an angel, right? <laughs> like an extended amount of time with an angel who was an etheric angel who dropped into a body. So in the flesh, not just in my head, or imaginary, in the flesh, proved to me that he was who he said he was over and over and over again. So much that I, I have no doubt in my mind when I tell you right now, right? <laughs> no doubt uh, that he was who he said he was. And he he addressed what you're talking about. He I asked him. <laughs> I asked him about about the God that that I had learned about in the church, and uh, about you know when you go to heaven and then they look at the list of all the bad things you did and decide if you go to heaven or hell. And he's like, "Yeah, it's like uh, made in the image and likeness of doesn't mean like you look in the mirror and, and God looks like you." It means you're made up like the cosmic energy that you are, all the neutrons and protons and all that energy that you are that makes up who you are. Soul. Is, soul is God, right? So he said, so there is truly, you are correct. There is no man in the sky making a list, checking it twice, deciding who is naughty or nice. He said, humans get it confused that santa claus it's not god and i fell out laughing so hard to hear an angel <laughs> that's santa claus that's not god i was just like thank you for that because now i had that image you know anytime i was visiting a church with someone or hearing someone proselytize and they were talking about that uh, man in the sky god then I got to at least within my head have a chuckle again, remembering <laughs> when he when he told me and used those words, because um, it just he he reconfirmed so many things for me. Because I had like Lisa, I had many experiences when I was a child, including being able to hear my guardian angel's voice, right, who did tell me things and keep me out of way and all of these things so i i got information then and already was born knowing things that most priests and and reverends and bishops of the churches i was going to weren't even privy to and didn't get like they just didn't get it when they were reading the bible they're saying they're reading words from the stage and then saying this is what it means and and what they were saying was i was just like how did you get that from that like i don't I don't understand. Like, no, this is what it means. So I got in trouble for that straight away. But uh, <laughs> what do you know, kid? Uh, but this reconfirmation after my teens, where I just completely forgot it all, <laughs> went off into a party phase, right? And just 
used it only when it was convenient to me, my knowledge of anything. Uh, but that reconfirmation from an angel in so many ways, and then uh, the proof over and over again of not only showing me miracles, but having me literally perform them to get to where I know what I know what I know today, not just think, have a theory of feel, <laughs> right? It's like he wanted to make sure that I didn't spend the rest of my life thinking I knew something because I had to know, absolutely know, and prove to myself to be able to step into the purpose that he then later revealed to me that of why I'm here to do what I do every day, right? <laughs> so make the movie that we made, everything I'm going to do here moving forward, every book I ever wrote, every book we ever published, you know, all of that I was told I would do uh, so many, so many years ago. And, uh, yeah, and it was <laughs> in an out of body, out of body experience where there was, uh, entities there and proof of this God that we speak of, this God that we're talking about, which, it, that, which we are, by the way, directly connected to, we're not cut off from it just because exactly. we decided to try on this meat sack called the body, right? That doesn't mean we're disconnected from this the source of It's finely designed biology. Yeah, we are literally made of it. <laughs> so direct connection, because we are it. We are made of it. And so, yeah. So what do you all think about that? <laughs> Put it in the comments. <laughs> what do you think? It's not not just us here. Talking about things, I'd love to get you involved in the conversation here on YouTube in the comments. What do you think about what we're saying? So, yeah, so you know, and this, you know, you use the term meat suit, which is, you know, we're just, we're, that's, that's part of the programming that we are taught that these are just, these are just meat suits. These are sacred temples for God. They're literally biological temples. We are, we are the guardians of these sacred temples. And we, these bodies have just been, been so maligned, so disrespectful by the powers that be on this planet that you know this is also part of what cuts us off from our knowing of God because God has be has been turned into a concept oh God that God is off there somewhere in in heaven that's where that's where God is you know, we're not, this is hell here. This is not heaven. Like, this is very clearly not heaven the way it is set up on this planet. However, this planet is literally the Garden of Eden. It's the paradise that God created. And we can still see the paradise when we go out into the, into the world, into the wilderness, out into where there is no population we can still see the divine design. We can still see yes. the paradise that has been created, this beautiful living ecosystem. that, And every single thing on this planet, every tree, every plant, every animal, every fish, every bird, they are all directly connected, as are we, to God. And they simply allow the living life force energy that is that God to flow through them. And every, every living thing is here celebrating God, the creation of all that is from this love. And it's like, when we, when we really get in the body, and we really tune in to God, 
the real God, not the fake one, <laughs> but it becomes a visceral experience. Like we don't believe in God. You can't believe in God, but you can know God. You can experience God in your body. And when, but when we're not treating these, but when we're treating the body like a meat suit, we can't experience God in the body because God doesn't come into some meat suit. God comes in to the temple, into the sacred space that is ours and we merge and then we just allow that living life force energy to come through and express itself through us and then this is how heaven on earth has to come through the body like this is how we change the planet is we allow it to be changed by God through us. And it's like, this is when everything just works. You know, when we're as humans trying to, when I was trying to make my business work, like it didn't work. But once I started to be able to open up and allow myself to be guided, then just everything just works. Like it's just simple because it's that co creation with God, just allowing the divine in. <laughs> of course, when I say meat sack, I say it in jest. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> I know. And a lot of people just, you know, that's like, where I got that thanks. from other people yeah, saying those exactly. words to me. I was just like, wow, like literally you think that's it. Like you're just a meat sack. Wow, wow, wow. Right. And that's how the medical model treats us too. That's mm -hmm. how the medical model looks at the body. It's just meat. Oh, let's yeah. just cut that up. Well, you don't need that part. We'll just cut that part out. That Oh, that seems to be disease. Let's just cut that part off. You don't really need that part. Yeah. It was wow. like it was designed. It's part of my design. Yeah, I need it. <laughs> I, need, I didn't need it. Hey, I, I needed that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I needed that. Well, we just took it out. We were in there, so we just we just took it out. We, what, 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 what? Uh, well, and you said the words "your body is a temple," and that was that was one of the words that I did hear in the Mormon Church growing up. That I did, I go yes, and did hear truth in right those mm -hmm. words when they said because they said all the time in the Mormon church your body is a temple usually they're talking about when why we don't drink you know why we don't drink coke and coffee and partake in these certain things right is because your body is a temple so it's like meaning treat it well so that you can live in this life as long as you can you came here you might as well be here for a minute <laughs> right? so your body is a temple and then uh, my angel actually said, your body is a temple, treat it as such, was the words that he said. And uh, I was just like, mm, yeah, yeah. And and you have to remember, like, I was in my deep, dark drug phase when he told me that, and I certainly was not <laughs> treating my body like a temple at the time. So treating treat it as such was kind of like um, all caps with an exclamation point to my psyche when I heard it with that <laughs> behind it. Right? And uh, and then and then you were talking about happens through us. And uh, I love that too. That was kind of I think probably probably Reverend Michael back with 28, 30 years ago, whatever. Probably the first time I heard that was from him. Where he's like, you know, Life isn't happening to you, it's happening through you. Mm -hmm. Everything is happening through you because you're directly connected, you're creating everything. It's like a it's like a video game, right? <laughs> Where you go, eh, let's see, I want to choose this car and I want this motor and I want these tires, and like you could literally design this car down to 
specific thing and pick your character that you want to drive the car and all this stuff. Not a video gamer, but I've been there when they were doing all of that. Right? And I was just like, wow, you can do all of that. Mm-hmm. And then I'm like, oh, wow, you know, you can do that in real life too. And I, that's where I lose them right about there. But <laughs> most video gamers, they're like, yeah, oh, yeah, whatever. I just keep designing the car. But uh, that's, that's how our life is when we're in direct connection with this this source this god that we're talking about that we're talking about then it's uh call it co-creation co-creation semantics doesn't matter uh i, I love to say and I, and I it was fun on my uh, angel tour i did a million interviews and i think every interview and every time i spoke came out what came out of my mouth was it doesn't care what you call it as long as you call it and the first time that got, that dropped in, I was just like, that is so good. Right? <laughs> but it's not like I sat around trying to think of a tagline or something. It's like it just popped in one time from where, right? My mind my mind isn't the kind of mind that comes up with 50 awesome, funny slogans, right? Uh, <laughs> my mind could write a song, but it doesn't necessarily work in some of the ways of the things that I know to be downloads from where I came, <laughs> right? where I came from, those type of downloads. And for me, I'm blessed in that a lot of times it, it literally comes as a voice that's, uh, I can hear the same as yours, Lisa, you know, usually over my shoulder, not, not in my head, right? So not a thought, literally a voice audible over my shoulder. And so because it comes, in that way so many times that helped me differentiate and and not get in my head about am i making this up you know ah, getting back into that mind frick that i put myself through and why it literally took an angel (laughs) to get me to believe again (laughs) in this thing we're talking about today so so what a it's a blessing to be in this life, I'll speak for myself personally. It's a blessing for me to be in this life and know that I am living proof that the thing we're talking about today exists. To know that I am made up of the God stuff, to know that I am in creation slash co creation with it, that I have choices, that the things that I truly breathe into and lean into believe believe capital b then those things come true for for me it's only when i get into doubting going back wishy-washy back and forthness forgetting (laughs) for a minute uh all of those things only then am i do i create Things that are seemingly negative, not exactly the way that I would love them to be or feel in my life. So it's a blessing to to have that knowledge and to know that with absolute certainty and to have the platform to be able to share that with you who are watching, listening to this. Oh, it's my, my calling and my blessing to be able to share the things that I know and perhaps there's something that you've been doubting, wondering, and perhaps it will be the way Lisa said it. Well, ah, got it. Or the way that I said it, or the way both of us said it. And that's why we love so much working together, because we feel like you know, there's the possibility that <laughs> it'll be either, either the way one of us said it, or when we get together and say things together. Uh, could be the way that we both said it that had it land in a way that maybe helped you reframe that word and be able to use it again or put you in direct connection with it so that it too can shape your life and to the to the heaven on earth that you want it to be. Yeah, and you just used two two words believing and knowing and for a long time 
I didn't really realize the difference between those two words. We're all taught to, you know, you got to believe. Be, are you a believer? <laughs> you know, how do you believe? Um, you know, and you know, what do you believe? Well, we've been taught what to believe from the time we were children. And, you know, we've been taught that we have to believe in God or believe in this or that. And when I found myself facing cancer, I believed that I was being attacked by some killer disease. And I got to tell you, it was not fun. <laughs> it was not a good time. And when I, you know, and at the same time, I believed that I would die literally if I ended up doing the the whole chemo route because I would, I literally would have just given up. I I would have just thrown in the towel. I was like, screw it, I'm done. Um. But then I also, I also believed that my body could heal itself, but it was really more of an, I know this because I've watched it heal. Like every time I've had a cut, every time I've had a, a break, a sprain, a bruise, like, so I suddenly realized, well, wait a second, you know, like, what do I actually know? like that is beyond believing. I, and I started to go, wait a second, there's a difference between believing and knowing. And so then I started to ask the question, what do I need to know about this in order for it to change? And so because I stayed in that question, what do I need to know about this cancer in order for it to change. I sat in that question until I was able to get my mind quiet enough. And guess what happened? The knowing dropped in. And I was like, oh, got it. And it was completely obvious, totally clear. Hey, Lisa, your body's not being attacked by some killer disease and neither is anybody else's. Your body is responding to the emotional input you're providing. And I was like, that I knew beyond the shadow of a doubt that that was true. And as soon as I started to tune into my knowing, I didn't have to believe anymore. I stopped believing in things. I stopped believing in everything. And I started to know things because I realized that our beliefs, for the most part, the majority of them are completely untrue because somebody else has taught us what to believe. But knowing, you can't take that away from somebody. You know truth. Like we believe lies, but we know truth. Like, and there's a level of knowing that like, there's nothing beyond that knowing. Meaning like when I knew beyond the shadow of a doubt that cancer is an illusion, like there's nothing beyond that. Meaning like there's no deeper rabbit hole to go down when you realize, oh, this is what's actually happening on a biological level. Like then like there, there are no beliefs after that. It's just, <laughs> here's what's happening. Yeah. So it's from my perspective, it's really, really important to tune all the way inside until you get to the knowing the real truth. <laughs> and right. there's not just one truth. Like there's just truth. Right. Yeah. I agree, like beliefs can be programmed and programmed beliefs come from the outside, right? Come from the outside world. So church, school, the news, any TV, any movie, really beliefs can be programmed through that into the subconscious mind. So you might not even know some of the beliefs that you're carrying which are there 
that we're creating. That's a whole nother workshop. Uh, mm -hmm. So beliefs can be created, usually come from the outside. Uh, when, when I say it, what I was talking about, like when I use that word belief, uh, you could insert the word faith. I think that's what I what I mean when I say believe is, you know, I truly have faith that this is going to come to pass, right? And then no, for me, when I know, <laughs> it a lot of times means that I have seen proof <laughs> of that evidence of that thing over and over again because sometimes it takes me more than once to see something before i believe it in the 3d world uh but but the, ultimately lo knowing and i was just chatting this one writing this down while, while you were talking right and then you say the same things which is really cool so ultimately knowing for me comes as a direct download or from seeing it yeah it's either seeing it in the 3d world right <laughs> And then I, oh, okay, then I know it. Or I just oh, get that direct download. It comes with visual, it comes with voice, it comes with everything to where it's just like, you know, this is truth. And I know it. And so that's when I use the word no, that's, it's one of those two things, either just literally seen proof in the 3D over and over and over and over again, or I got it so strong of a reveal <laughs> right that came in such a way that i was just like i know that this is this is true and then have you ever found that there's something that you know and then still doubt or still have fear about oh i'm sure i can't think of a like <laughs> a, like absolutely 100 percent, and i yeah. can't think of a i can't think of a good i can yeah i can think of one i had uh this angel told me all about life before life life and life after life same thing right about everything happening at the same time not there really is no time and space it's all just kind of firing off at the same time like all these lessons like when the body dies where the spirit goes like all of that from an angel and still couple years after and for many many years after horrific dreams about dying in all these different ways and this total fear of death that even if i just thought it then i'd get this full body rush and just be like just scared like what if you were in a roller coaster that dropped to 100 stories like that kind of a rush in my body and uh, yeah, but I know better. So what the, what the what? And, and then I got with the, some woman who was like really well known for doing Acacia records with people and whew, she put me under and, you know, the whole deal. And then when I came out, she's like, God, God, do you find that you have fear of death? And it's like, yeah, she's like, nightmares. I'm like, yeah. And she's like, okay. And then she just told me about like how many times that I've reincarnated and how many of those ended with horrific deaths. And the ones that she was explaining to me were the dreams that I was having. Uh, yeah. And so she's like, so it's just like truly because we're made up of cells and memories and all of that, the, your angel saying <laughs> there is life after death, right? Is was only one thing, but then you have fifty other things <laughs> that are just like horrific, right? Just horrific deaths. It's kind of one overrides the other. So, so she had to go kind of cut the cord and and remove me from all of that, <laughs> those negative memories, or at least feeling in my cells and body the residual, from all of those horrific deaths. So. So it's, it's mind blowing to me because I was just like, I think I bartered or something. I think, you know, I was just like, okay, Acacia Records, woo, you know. <laughs> At that point, I was kind of like, that seemed like a little woo woo to this guy. But everything that she was telling me, and and then I was in LA at the time and I had driven up over what they call the Sepulveda Pass, for those of you that 
ever live in California or ever been there know what I'm talking about. It is a very, just a number of miles goes up and over a hill, but to get from one freeway through that down to the south where it opens up again, uh, it's only a short stretch of miles, but can take hours because it's just big. slower than like if you forgot to pee. Oh my God, trouble! <laughs> you can't get off, and you can't. Pee. But uh, so I so being in that loving and kind and giving and caring as I was to everybody, I still when I was sitting in that traffic, I would just get for a while and pound the steering wheel and you know poor Mara's in the car with this just going like hmm, this is one thing he might want to work on so uh so after i saw that lady the Kashuk record lady uh we were on our way home and we were knee deep in that traffic you know and i was talking to mara and it must have been 45 minutes an hour into just sitting in a parking lot and uh, mara's like oh my god my god she goes do you realize We've been sitting in this traffic for all this time and you're just not wigging out. And I was like, huh. <laughs> Casey record lady, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Mind blowing. So yeah, so so even knowing, right? I like I knew something, yet I was still having a fear of it. So that was really a mind blower. So for me, so I just want to touch on that because there may be things people listening that were just like, but I know this, but then I still have this fear or this thing happens in my body. And so that could possibly be in in cells, right? And so so sometimes it takes more to get rid of the opposite of feeling or opposite of what we feel we know. Sometimes it takes more than just saying, I know that. <laughs> Sometimes we really have to sit and work with that or go to somebody who can help release it or do some, some a lot of meditating or energy work. And, and, uh, and all of that is God too. Right? <laughs> so we have, oh, we have the, all these tools provided for us. And sometimes people are even afraid of those. Call it woo-woo. Call it a lot of things. <laughs> Call it conspiracy, call it whatever you want, uh, but there it's all available to us because we can have heaven on earth, which we talk about all the time, Lisa, because it's a choice. It literally is just a choice whether we have heaven on earth or not. Because we can have the same exact day either way. The things that happen will be the same. It's how do we perceive the things that happen. How do we feel while they're happening? And it's a choice. Yes. You know, and and where where are we plugging in to? Are we plugging, you know, we are here on this planet, then there's God, and then there's the society that has been set up in between us and God. Are we plugging in to the matrix? Are we plugging into the society? Are we plugging into the you know external validation sourcing from this this uh, matrix that has been set up, or are we sourcing directly from source itself? And it makes all the difference. You know where are we tuning into? Because this false matrix is really bad. Oh, and it's like everywhere <laughs> and it's really we have been taught to plug in to that false matrix and that's not god <laughs> and <laughs> it doesn't work the same as god and our results are very different <laughs> than they are when we are tuned into God itself and allowing original creation to flow through us and to educate us. Like when we are allowed to 
source information from source itself that's the ultimate teacher mm. like nature being out in nature is really if, the ultimate teacher and if it doesn't feel good it's most likely not in alignment <laughs> with with that good that you're talking about with that god that you're talking about yeah yeah, it's, uh, I used to tell people to look, go within, go within. There's, there's really nothing for you outside. For you, all capital letters, right? So there's plenty of things we can do outside and meet with people and we can connect and we can go to concerts and we can do all that stuff. But truly like to get in tune with the nature of where we came from and, and who we are and why we're here. Right, that's another thing I thought about maybe talking about today was, you know, life purpose. Like, why are we here? Uh, but to get those kind of answers, it, I tried my darndest to find out why I was here on this planet from outside sources. I, boy, I extensively searched in church, synagogue, mosque, somebody standing on a soapbox in the park. I was listening. I I asked everybody why am I here? Why am I here? And I never got the answer until I sat down and breathed and asked long enough, stayed in that one question long enough to, to get an answer. Okay. So yeah, it's all it's all right here. <laughs> yeah. I chose to come here. Why did I choose to come here? And you know, for a long time, I was like, the hell is she thinking? <laughs> like, what did I do this? And actually, when I was very, when I was very little and was, you know, could, could see and I, it was completely obvious to me that this was a prison planet. It was, the prison was clear to me that we were all stuck in this prison. And unfortunately for me at the time, I didn't realize, but, you know, I, that I was one that had been sent to start dismantling the prison. I thought I had been sent to prison. So knowing that you've been, knowing that you've been sent to prison, <laughs> believing uh -huh. that I had been sent to prison was a very different setup than I had been sent to dismantle the prison. <laughs> It, you know, two completely different things, same scenario, two different ways of looking at it. So it's really important to, to recognize that, you know, which side are we looking from, <laughs> you know, because the, the, the scenario is the same, but how we look at it is different. Like what's happening to our bodies, to our bodies, we can look at it as disease, or we can look at it as healing. Same scenarios. Which way are you going to approach it? Because <laughs> you're going to get totally different results, depending yes. on how you come at it. <clears throat> oh, do I know that one to be true? <laughs> <laughs> and thank you for that, Lisa. <laughs> and I got to remind somebody of that uh, just yesterday who was having pain and all of that. And they were like, yeah, I decided not to take the pills. Like I did that at the beginning, but then I just decided, oh, you know, these are making me feel, they don't feel good. So I just, why am I taking them anyway? And so I just stopped taking them. And then, and so that was like a week of complete agony, trying to do the, the, the doctor's way. And then, I just like put those down and then started experiencing healing. Mm. It's like, ah, oh, I can't believe I forgot that. How many times have you said that? Pain equals healing. Anytime you try to stop the pain, you're stopping the healing. He was like, ah, oh. but if I said, but innately you came to it, whether you remembered it or not, you came to it because you put them down and just stopped and breathed in and said let the healing begin so yeah sometimes it takes us a minute 
this this beautiful planet is the way it is and we can look at it as that it's a nightmare or we can see it as the paradise that it is it always has been it has just kind of been covered up a bit <laughs> by beliefs <laughs> yeah so yeah i know yeah all the time people are talking about what a horrible place this is it's like oh you've been watching the news because <laughs> i that's not my world i don't even i don't like one thing 99 percent of what you're talking about right now i don't even know what you're talking about because i don't watch that but, uh, but even if i was i would be like erase erase even as if it was in my view because i was in a room where i had to be there people talking i'll constantly be erasing 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 the programming as i'm hearing it happening so that i don't get it on me because i just uh, I don't really do op what i call opd other people's drama i just <laughs> i'm just not interested in it uh because it's not mine so why would i get all caught up and bent out of shape and upset and feel horrible or angry or frustrated about something that's literally not affecting me <laughs> i just i don't understand the concept of that <laughs> i don't uh i have had enough things in my life that literally did affect me, right like uh like my my little sister got murdered and here's what the news does my brother found out that she was murdered because he had the news on and they reported it before he was told that it happened so that's how awesome the news is mm -hmm. uh one example like they don't even care right about you literally have an experience of how much they don't care about you uh so yeah that was that was even before my whole being in in the news for all those years and that was even before then so shocking that i got into it but i didn't get into it to be in the media i got into it for movies and you know other types of production uh, but after a while it's just like icky. too much new stuff was coming to us so i was like oh, i gotta i'm gonna go over here and start my own company because this is starting to be a news place and i'm not into that at all um yeah so the good news is <laughs> yeah that our our three feet our globe how we are in it is everything so when we have that straight and it's heaven in our globe mm -hmm. here's the good news when people step into our three feet in our globe we're so loving and kind to them and they feel they literally feel because everything is energy the heaven that we're feeling it's oh god it feels so good to be around you or you always say the right thing or have you heard these things from people oh my god i just love being oh yeah you know, all these things that's why because we're not being affected by other people's drama and we know that what what our life is is what our life is and we choose that how we feel about things that are going on we choose about what we create we choose who we hang out with we choose the information that we want to come into our brain we choose all of these things so we can experience god so we can experience heaven on earth same thing <laughs> right we're calling it god today lisa calls it heaven on earth a lot of times if you listen to it all the videos you ever heard of what she's talking about heaven on earth <laughs> she's using another word <laughs> <laughs> for god spirit universe right and uh and the, the great awakening <laughs> that everybody's thinking is going to happen outside of them you know it's the whole y2k it's the whole 2020 it's the whole story over again the rapture you know everything everybody's looking outside of them for proof of these things and every one of those things is an inside job the external right. world is a reflection of the internal world right so 
all of the disconnection that has, that we have allowed to happen within us then creates that chaos on the external world so yeah today we're really we're talking about god because there's so much distortion in that word and the the god that we have all well the the majority of humanity has been sub subjected to is this guy in the sky that's taking notes and you know has your destiny and <laughs> you know and who wants to be part of that like that that's not loving that's not kind that's not unconditional love so that's the false god and when you tune in and you truly reconnect to the real god the prime mother father god prime creator the giver of all life it's a completely different experience and it's a very personal experience it's an intimate experience and when we tune into that and we source from there there is no trauma and drama there's just love there's peace there's paradise there is heaven on earth and we don't have to plug ourselves into that matrix we don't have to subject ourselves to that we don't have to follow the rules that somebody else created you know when we follow the rules of god it's like do no harm play nice you know, <laughs> live enjoy life go explore have fun honor each other treat your body as a temple recognize that everything is sacred and go have a blast have fun you know, that's the rules <laughs> <laughs> the ten commandments love and be loved go outside breathe in nature sit down and meditate you know <laughs> we should make up our own Ten Commandments. <laughs> <laughs> Each and every one of us, make up your own Ten Commandments. Because you wouldn't be making them up. You'd be bringing them through, pulling them through. Right? Or call it Ten Things That Make Me Happy. On the list. And go out and do those things. <laughs> right? Exactly. It's like when, uh, when I used to want to be rich, and then mom said, what are the things that make you feel rich? And I wrote them down, and she said, now let's schedule one. And put them in the calendar and I did the things and I realized it wasn't about the money which wasn't about the money it's about receiving the qualities doing the things that I had only dreamed of doing before actually doing them and that's the beauty part about this conversation no matter what we talk about it's all going to be a god <laughs> It's all good because it's all God. It's all good because it's all good. <laughs> it's all God because it's all good. Exactly. Yeah. One initial difference. <laughs> God and good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> One letter. That's it. Yes. And it's the same thing. Just a letter dropped out. Ah, well, thanks for thinking of this subject to talk about today. Conversations in consciousness. <laughs> I love these, and just so you, just so you folks know, uh, these are the conversations that we have hanging out together <laughs> in real time with our friends <laughs> down by the river, on a hike, or whatever. These are the conversations that happen. Conversations in consciousness. So, so who do you, who do you know that you can call up today or sit with, connect with? And uh, just open up a dialogue with we're having today. Because when we don't have an attachment to being right about anything, we're just sharing our inner knowing, our inner thoughts, our inner beliefs. Uh, call it uh, some somebody else's belief may end up being your knowing. It's in full alignment. 
you may not have ever heard anybody else say it unless they said it to you. So having conversations like this with others is very beneficial to the soul. That it is. We love it. So we encourage you today, if you do not have, if you have not reestablished a connection with God, to to do some work to clear out all of the distortions and and go within and discover what God is to you so that you can have that visceral palpable experience of knowing the unconditional love that is just is like it's everywhere but it just is all of the trees, all of the plants, all of the animals, the fish, the birds, the, all plugged in to this divine love. It's just humanity that kind of unplugged for a while. So it's time for us to plug ourselves back in to prime creator, to source. Because when we source from source, we lack for nothing. Is. so it is so thank you keith for another fabulous conversation and consciousness and thank you all for joining us and allowing us to come into your lives with our conversations so let's keep the conversations going now you guys take your knowing and go out and strike up some conversations to spark knowing in others. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Until next time, create for yourselves some great days because you can. <laughs> Bye for now. Thanks for listening to this episode of Connecting You to You Radio. If you've enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe and share it with your friends. Are you ready to discover more about how simple healing your body can actually be when you do it from the higher wisdom of your soul? To learn more about what I do and how you can work with me, visit ConnectingYouToYou.com and get on my mailing list to be the first to know about my latest offerings. If you'd like to interact with me on Facebook, please join my group, Soul Sourced Healing. Check the show notes below for these links and more. I hope to see you again next time on Connecting You to You Radio.